Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Sasha Lekic. I'm the transportation reporter at Mashable. I cover autonomous, electric, and shared vehicles, which brings us to Andre here. Um, Andre Haddad is the CEO of Turo, a peer-to-peer car sharing company. Uh, joined a CEO in 2011. Brief before he was at Turo, we had he was CEO of Shopping.com, which eBay acquired in 2005 for $600 million before Shopping.com. He was at eBay. Um, before his eBay days, he found, co-founded iBazaar, a leading European auction marketplace. And it was also acquired by eBay in 2001 for $140 million. And so he has a, a strong, strong background in e-commerce and <laughs> the online marketplace world, um, which brings us to peer-to-peer car sharing. Um, it's a big industry and growing. It's projected to grow from it was 5 billion in 2016 to up to 11 billion in 2024 and Toro's part of that growth they now have over 350,000 cars listed on the p- platform they're in 5,500 cities in 300 plus airports someone just said they used it at an airport on a recent trip um, and they're in the US Canada Germany UK that's that's the full list yep. all right yep. and most basically, I guess you would say it's an alternative to car rentals. Um, yeah. We, we like to call it a way better there we go. alternative to a rental car. Yeah. So <laughs> also in the way you guys describe it, you seem to have embraced the kind of, I wouldn't say terror or dreaded, but a lot of, you know, we're the Uber for this, we're the Netflix mm-hmm. for that. But you guys have embraced kind of the, we're the Airbnb for cars or car rentals. Do you think that's why have you guys taken that on? Is it, is it a good way of describing how it works? Does it's it a good get shortcut, I think, for a lot of people. Um, okay. And people have ADD, <laughs> especially investors, and to some extent, reporters. Yeah, for sure. Would you agree, Sasha? We're busy. We're busy. You're, you guys are very busy. <laughs> so, Airbnb for cars is a good shortcut. Um, the reality is, we're a bit of a hybrid of Airbnb and Uber uh, in, in many ways. Uh, because we have uh, a big part of our business is really travel, which, of course, Airbnb is all about travel. Mm -hmm. Uh, So airports and people going from one state to another or from one country to another, that's a big part of our business, half of our business. But then the other half of the business is what we call local mobility. And local mobility, especially relevant in the markets where we have uh, achieved a lot of supply liquidity, um, for example, cities like San Francisco or LA or other big cities, Mm -hmm. And in those markets, uh, a lot of our users not just use us for travel, but use us as their weekend car. Uh, You know, many people in these big cities have opted out of car ownership altogether or have downsized, you know, to maybe one car. And, you know, in those circumstances, you know, Turo becomes a great companion app to have on your phone for all of your longer trips. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, it doesn't really make sense to use electric scooters to go to Napa for the weekend. Right. Uh, or to use even Uber or Lyft to go to, say, that's you know. Expensive Lyft it's ride. expensive, it's <laughs> not necessarily very convenient, uh, and it doesn't provide you with the privacy and the flexibility that you want. And you have a car in your neighborhood, it's your neighbor's car, you can just start using it, and people, we, see con- we are connecting a lot of neighbors for that local mobility part of the business as well. So a little bit of transportation and travel kind of merged into one, one business. Okay. Mm. So... You already mentioned it, but I wanted to start off with an obvious car ownership numbers always cited. Just yesterday, there was study about auto sales down 2.5%, mm. mm-hmm. and their cars are the most expensive average, over 30000 for you know the average vehicle in the U.S. Right. to buy new. So interested to know how that affects how you get people to join both as guests and hosts, the terms you guys use for somebody who's renting their car versus someone who's sharing, sharing the car. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah. it it definitely, I think the, the core, uh, the core reason why we've been able to convince many people to, you know, list their car and share it on on Turo is an economic one. Uh, and I think you're, uh, uh, referring to some, uh, uh, really important trends that we've seen play out over the last, you know, uh, 20 years, which is, uh, chronic underutilization of vehicles. You know, the utilization rate of cars has actually started, uh, has, has continued to decline 
uh, over the last decades. It's now less than 5% utilization rates. And secondly, uh, increasing cost of acquisition for vehicles. Uh, you know, the, the average new car last year was uh, more than 30K, yeah. uh, which, you know, is a, is a real conundrum for, c for the average consumer that, uh, you know, understands that the car for many are, is really a necessity, yet it's increasingly a uh, unaffordable um, necessity and, and unaffordable uh, acquisition and unaffordable uh, uh, maintenance, uh, you know, there's lots of costs associated with uh, with car ownership, including insurance, including parking, including maintenance and taxes and so forth. So, uh, so it's the perfect storm. And a lot of people are getting more and more into debt to be able to acquire a, a new car or to be able to acquire a used car. Uh, there was a report recently uh, that showed that uh, there are more than 7 million Americans that were behind on their car loans. And that trend keeps on growing. Uh, so it's, it's a uh, there's a real economic issue, uh, but it's also an economic opportunity if you try to reverse the problem and think about it differently, which is how we've been thinking about the economics of car ownership. We, you know, we've, we've, uh, the, the, the thesis behind the, the company is that cars may not make sense to own uh, if you're uh, just using them, you know, five to 10% of the time, but if you can share them and earn money uh, with them when you're not using them yourself, uh, and if we can make that experience as easy and safe and convenient as possible, then a lot more people would be able to uh, take advantage of the convenience of car ownership, but find ways to offset the disadvantages of car ownership, which is prim primarily the financial Yeah, elements. and are people buying, I saw a Bloomberg story about a, uh, a host who bought a car specifically with mm -hmm. car sharing in mind. Right. Bought it saying, I'm gonna buy this car because I can pay off the monthly payment yeah. by sharing it with strangers. Um, so are you guys seeing that? More people are justifying the, a new yeah, car there, there, There's increasingly a number of people who are uh, you know, m more and more savvy about you know, what, what they want to buy and for what reason. Mm -hmm. uh, late last year, we launched uh, a uh, product called Carculator that you and I talked about mm -hmm. uh, uh, a few days ago. You know, Carculator, uh, it's on Turo.com slash Carculator. You can check it out if you're uh, in the market for a car. <laughs> uh, it, it will show you based on your zip code and your make and model, uh, you know, how much your car can actually earn uh, based on, you know, millions of transactions that we've now accumulated over the last few years. Uh, and it's uh, it's fascinating to see that you know the average uh, the average vehicle uh, in across the country earns r around six hundred dollars uh, net of Turo's fees, so really in the pockets of of uh, of the car owner, which can actually m more than pay for the car payment. So a lot of people are starting to think, well, let me uh, let me not just buy the car based on my personal preferences. Can I try to align the stars and get a car that I really am interested in buying, but one that is also optimized for, for earning uh, on a marketplace like Turo. Right. Uh, and uh, we've seen some surprising you know, growth. Uh, uh, we, if you'd like, we can talk a little bit about some of the... We've got a whole uh, slew of people coming in here. <laughs> there's some more seats here, so You may, you may sit by my in. foot right here. Uh, <laughs> there, uh, you know, there's, there's been some interesting... Um, you know, interesting uh, uh, evolution in uh, you know in in the uh, hosting community at Turo. In the early days, um, you know, when when I joined uh, Shelby Clark, our founder, in mm -hmm. September 2011, we had a couple of hundred cars. Right. Uh, and frankly, we had you know we we knew that there was going to be significant economic value that we'll create for car owners, but we didn't really expect. Uh, the hosting communities grow and be so diverse. Um, so if you uh, if you show the next slide uh, on the presentation, hello, can you show the next slide, please? Um, so uh, the following one. So this was, I thought, some eye candy to <laughs> <laughs> would be some would fun be cars. fun. <laughs> you know, we I had no idea back in 2011. I think no one had any idea back in 2011 that that, that we'd have uh, <laughs> these kinds of cars on on the app. Uh, you know, we we thought 
uh, we thought that people would share mo mostly utilitarian vehicles. Uh, and of course, we have a lot of those. But I was going to say, there's Prius, Corolla, yes. uh, Civic. Yes, so, but those are the <laughs> listings that produced the most revenue last year. And you know, it's, it's sort of obviously very premium oriented. If you switch to the next slide, um, we could show, I could show you here the, the most popular models, uh, right. which is, I think, more representative of the mix of, uh, you know, premium, but also a lot of uh, very uh, uh, utilitarian vehicles like the Prius that you were talking about. It's number three, you know, on our list. Yeah. Wait, um, so who, who are these people sharing their cars? Is it, you know, obviously the people who have their Lamborghinis and then there's the people with their... So the Lamborghinis the tend to be like the car enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of car enthusiasts on the app. Uh, and, you know, in many ways, it's a great way to, uh, to connect with other enthusiasts. Uh, and it's a great way for you to, to pay for <laughs> your expensive <laughs> hobby. <laughs> you know, Lamborghinis cost even more money than the Prius. Mm -hmm. uh, and car enthusiasts, uh, you know, are so passionate about cars that uh, they don't uh, you know their investments don't always make f financial sense. Right. <laughs> so you know we we have a we have a great opportunity here with Turo to enable them to let their Lamborghini or their whatever Tesla Mercedes shine. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the you know on the demand side, you know Turo has become a great place for people to find cars and be able to experience cars that you can't experience anywhere else, including you know those those specialty vehicles, those premium cars. Yeah. So that's the segments for you know the mm -hmm. premium. Uh, as you can see in the top 10 here, top 11, there's a big electric uh, yeah, segment. Yeah, I was going to say, see a lot of Teslas, is that yeah. are people intrigued by a Tesla? Is it a try before yeah. you buy it, situation? I mean, <laughs> Tesla obviously is, is a very hot brand. And, uh, you know, like all the hot brands, it's well represented, you know, on, on Turo. We have three, uh, this is like the top 11 because the Model 3 just launched last year, as you, m as you mm -hmm. might know. Uh, it, it's literally in the, in the top five of, over the last six months of the year, but over the whole year sort of uh, almost made the top 10. So we have the X, the S, and the 3. And when you look at electric cars, you know, they uh, are incredibly overrepresented uh, in, the, in the marketplace for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. One is, uh, again, economic. You know, the costs of electric vehicles continue to be much higher than the equivalent combustion engine vehicle. So in order to justify, you know, the ownership of an electric car, uh, you know, you have to do a couple of things. One, you have to own it for a long period of time so that the lower maintenance costs can, you know, kind of uh, justify the initial bigger ticket mm -hmm. when you're buying the vehicle. And second, if you can share it, uh, you yep. know, you can earn, you know, quite a bit with it. You know, the average Tesla Model 3 last year earned $700 a month, which can almost pay for, for the, you know, for the car payment. Uh, so that's one reason. The second reason on the demand side is a lot of people, you know, there are two types of uh, segments for electric vehicles uh, demand on, on, on the marketplace. The first one is EV uh, owners themselves who are traveling and who cannot imagine themselves driving a combustion engine car anymore. Mm -hmm. So when you're one of those EV the owners, converts, uh, yeah. you know, in your hometown or wherever you live, you're traveling to another city and you need a car, you know, you just don't want to be seen behind the wheels of a combustion engine vehicle. At least that's uh, the vast majority of EV owners. And then secondly, a lot of people who are, exp you know, interested in EVs, uh, and, uh, you know, EVs are a big challenge for, for some people around the you know, range anxiety and, uh, you know, changes to the way, you know, you use a car, you know, uh, your existing combustion engine car. So a lot of people would like to try out a, an electric vehicle for a few days, sometimes for a week or two, to make up their mind and, 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 and sort of uh, make a decision that actually they can make it work for, for their commute or for their family or for their mm -hmm. whatever you know, situation that they're dealing with. And so we've become a great way for people to try you know, Teslas and electric vehicles. Uh, and yeah, I think the, seen by the, the co combination of these two factors have, uh, have made uh, EVs super popular. One thing I'd add is also the experience of sharing an EV is easier especially for, uh, for Teslas. They all come in with their owner app uh, on the phone. And so, you know, you can uh, do things with the app that you wouldn't be able to do with a, with a traditional combustion engine vehicle. For example, you can, uh, you know, remotely lock the car or unlock the car. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm a host myself on Turo. I have a couple of Teslas on, th- on the app. Oh. And, um, you know, sometimes I can't meet my guests in person, uh, which is okay because then I can pull up the Tesla app and when they show up at my house or wherever the car is parked, uh, I can just unlock the vehicle. I leave the key in it mm-hmm. and then I unlock it with the app and then they, you know, they, uh, they're able to start their trip without me necessarily needing to meet them in person. Mm. And all of these EVs are coming, you know, with these connected features built in, which frankly isn't yet the case for the vast majority of combustion engine vehicles. So connected vehicles, uh, you know, connected features coming in with EVs, you know, th- that two fa- those two factors are making sharing a lot easier. Makes sense. How do you, I'm just curious, how do you make sure, I guess on the supply side, that the site isn't just overrun with Priuses or there's no EVs, like how do you make sure that there's a diverse offering available? You know, it, is it, it just up to? It, it's, uh, what, what we focus mostly on is making sure that the supply is of high quality. Uh, we, we're not too worried about the, the diversity per se. Okay. Uh, we, we think it sort of comes with the evolution and development of the marketplace, diversity will come. Uh, it, it is true that uh, uh, you know, quality is uh, is where we focus mostly on, and so, you know, as we as you built up the supply, you know, when we started, you know, e- eight years ago, and we had a couple of hundred cars, uh, there there wasn't much of a curation that mm-hmm. was required. You know, we barely had a few cars in in a particular market. Now that we have a lot more cars in every market, we spend a lot more effort on the supply side of managing the marketplace around curation. And we automate curation based on you know quality metrics of the host and the and the vehicle. Mm-hmm. So you know we look at things like uh, you know the hosts uh, and the listings uh, five star ratings. Uh, we look at the review rates. Uh, we uh, we sometimes even analyze the verbatims um, uh, you know of uh, that are left you know the verbatims of the ratings and reviews that are left by the guests at the end of their trip. Uh, we look at uh, you know the price competitiveness. We look at the uh, uh, few you know a lot of different metrics, and all these metrics go into kind of the the ranking of results now. Uh, so uh, part of the ranking of results is diversity now to mm-hmm. make sure that we don't have you know on the first page of our search results in a city like San Francisco you know 50 Priuses. Uh, so it, it comes in. Yeah. It comes in now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But most of the curation that we do is around you know, quality and conversion. Okay, mm-hmm. makes sense. Um, and then with all this data, you have, you know, you're able to s- show which cars make hosts the most money, you're able right. to see what's the most popular on the demand side. Um, you're also able to see trends in car o- ownership or trends out there, like right now, compact SUVs. Mm-hmm. Very, very popular, very right. trendy. Right. So do you kind of have a pulse on all this or a little bit before, you know, everyone's clamoring for a hybrid compact SUV or, <laughs> yeah, are you able to yeah. use the, <laughs> we, your we, platform uh, to figure out what, where the, everything's going? Yeah, we do. Uh, I mean, we, uh, we have, uh, you know, there's a variety of ways people can search for cars, mm-hmm. uh, including looking at different categories and makes and models. And so we now have a lot more data around uh, what people are searching for. And this does a couple of things. It, it, uh, it helps us uh, uh, think about what supply efforts we need to put in place to make sure that we have a balanced marketplace where we have the right supply for the demand that we're seeing from the, uh, when, when we look at search logs and search sessions. And also it, it informs, I think, uh, what we're doing with some of the OEMs, you know, car manufacturers, uh, as you can imagine, you know, with uh, all this mega changes happening in the mobility world over the last 10 years, car manufacturers have uh, have been uh, looking at the trends of EVs and, you know, sharing and connected cars and, and try to find ways to take advantage uh, of, of these trends. Um, so, you know, what's, uh, what's fun for us to, to, to do now is we have, we've reached a certain scale in the, in the business where, uh, you know, we have uh, um, good plans in place with a bunch of OEMs. We announced uh, uh, some of these partnerships last year uh, with uh, Porsche in particular. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
um, you know, big car enthusiast community. Uh, Porsche is the fourth most searched brand on Turo. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a very, very popular, very popular uh, brand. And, you know, not all those searches end up in bookings, but a lot of people are looking to at least mm-hmm. look at the cars that are available. Um, we also have uh, a, a great partnership in place with uh, Mercedes-Benz, which also happens to be one of our investors. Um, we uh, uh, announced also late last year in a partnership with Jeep. So, you know, a lot of OEMs, I think, are realizing that the future of car ownership is, uh, to some extent, shared car ownership, not pure 100% car ownership. Uh, and, you know, they're trying to find ways to get the data from the marketplace of where where should they focus their efforts mm-hmm. uh, and uh, what uh, vehicles to promote, what vehicles to uh, to make available, and what vehicles to build in with that connected features that enable sharing in a much easier, faster way. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Well, the Turo platform here we, we have it. Um, we're going to open it up to questions. Um, great from the audience if you guys have them. Andre, start with you. So. Um, I'm curious specifically on the building of trust part. Um, Hmm. I work for a company that is built a wholesale marketplace in cannabis, and one of the dynamics that we face that's very difficult is getting people to trust, you know, buying or selling, you know, business-to-business cannabis online. Yeah. So approaching that dynamic, a lot of people will say, you can't just do that online. You can't just buy cannabis online without seeing it, without Hmm. inspecting it. You know, people don't trust one another. Um, what, What was one of the key components to how you got people to trust just putting their cars in the hands of strangers and listing that online. Yeah, trust obviously, uh, you know, is a, is a big part of what we focused on <laughs> over the last few years, and we continue to focus on it. So the first for us, because it's a peer-to-peer marketplace, not a B2B marketplace. Uh, one of the first things that we we did uh, was to enable direct uh, connection and communication between the the hosts and the guests. So we invested actually in a in a bunch of. Uh, you know, features and software that enable that. Uh, things like, uh, you know, a pretty robust messaging system, uh, a, you know, a profile page with a reputation uh, that's, uh, you know, displayed. Nothing, nothing that's sort of rocket science here, frankly, but, you know, it takes cycles when you're a small company, invest in trust, like where's the ROI on trust? You know, it's harder to pin down that metric of trust. But, you know, you gotta, uh, you gotta take as a principle of one of the things that, create trust in marketplace is the ability for transparency about information. Uh, and, and so we've invested in, you know, profile, a profile platform, a ratings and reviews platform, uh, and a messaging platform. And uh, we've displayed all these things very prominently in our, you know, booking experience and our listing experience. Uh, so that I think was step number one for us. Step number two is, uh, you know, in our business, uh, you know, we're connecting people around uh, an asset that uh, that moves, uh, that drives on roads. So there's you know a lot of risk associated with you know the roads. Uh, and so uh, one of the hardest things that we we've done and continues to be, I think, a, a big part of what we focus on, is figuring out the insurance component of uh, you know the hosting and uh, guest experience. So today, you know, we uh, we have a partnership with Liberty Mutual here in the U.S. We have Allianz in Europe and other. Uh, other great players, you know, in, in different parts of the country, uh, par- different parts of the world. But in the early days, it was very challenging to, you know, persuade a big insurance company to underwrite our risk because there's no data associated with it. So this may not be relevant for the B2B cannabis, you know, marketplace, but finding ways to set in place some guarantees that would be kind of the equivalent of an insurance, whether it's a money back guarantee or satisfaction, you know, whatever it is. Uh, and you know, for us, the insurance uh, brand of Liberty Mutual or Allianz or others also creates trust. So it both provides the protect the actual protection, and you know the uh, the halo of trust. So we've displayed that prominently in our experience. You know, it's insured by Liberty Mutual. If you download our app, you know, on the homepage of Turo, you'll see, you know, the brand, uh, the promise, and then it's insured by Liberty Mutual. So that's, I think, a big, big trust factor. And then finally, I'd say trust is earned uh, throughout the community interactions. Uh, and, and so you want to make sure that you actually deliver uh, a great product, great experience for, for your buyers. Um, and that you, uh, uh, you know, that you overinvest perhaps in, uh, in things like customer support or 
you know, escalations or operations in general. Uh, you know, we certainly overinvested in operations um, because we know that, uh, you know, if something fails, if something in the experience fails, whether, you know, the car is not the right car, I didn't, I didn't get what I, what I thought I booked, or, you know, I get to the car and wow, the, there's a there's a check engine light uh, that's on. There's some sort of maintenance issue. There's a tire issue. You know, we've put in place a lot of efforts because that's where trust breaks, and then your reputation can be incredibly damaged. And you know, we're not perfect at this, but we've uh, you know, and it's hard to be like 100% proof on this. But the way we've try to operationalize trust is by investing a lot in our operations team. We have 24-7 roadside assistance that may or may not be relevant for your business, but think about, uh, you know, people can be reassured and you can recover uh, a, 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 uh, an interaction with a customer that's going sideways. You can actually make that customer a promoter and, you know, trust the, the platform if you can intervene uh, in a human way, uh, but that requires obviously, you know, a lot of operational complexity, but I would invest in those two. Yeah, it's oddly quite relevant. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Awesome. We have a question over in the corner. Um, hey. Hi. How do you deal with the concern on the supply side that, you know, a user might use the car in a way that depreciates the car much faster without you being really able to detect that? So for example, just drive recklessly or, you know, just push it, you know, really put the pedal to the metal and you just don't know. I mean, that for me was always a major concern actually not to list the you guys. Yeah. So we, you know, part of the trust uh, that we uh, trust efforts that are not super visible because they're done behind the scenes <laughs> is a lot of screening that we do based on uh, a lot of data uh, that uh, uh, are, that we can both produce ourselves now as well as data that we can uh, source from the marketplace, uh, from the overall data marketplace. So things around, you know, driving records, uh, credit uh, credit scores. Uh, validity of email addresses, phone numbers. Uh, you know, there's a there's a thriving data, trust data marketplace out there. Uh, we have no fewer than 20 different data vendors that we sort of, uh, uh, that we've uh, over time, not not immediately, but over time have, have uh, 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 aggregated into our uh, account creation as well as first time booking and first time listing flows. We do all of these checks, you know, in real time. Uh, and uh, we uh, specifically go after people that, uh, you know, all kinds of different potential issues, including, uh, you know, criminal backgrounds or fraudulent backgrounds, but also irresponsible sort of driving and irresponsible, you know, uh, life. <laughs> and, and so we, we weed out those, those kinds of customers that way. It's not 100% perfect. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, we can't get to 100%, you know, precision there. So, you know, in, in the circumstance when all of this fails, we still have our insurance that covers uh, the, the vast majority of the things that are uh, reported to us. There are sometimes some hidden things that are hard to know that you find out, you know, many months later. Uh, fortunately, we found that to be extremely <coughs> rare. Um, and, and, and so I think it's the combination of that screening effort that we do up front uh, and then the protection that we do, you know, after the scenes that helps reduce that to a minimum. And when you say weed out, you just block the user? Or? Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we block around 15 people, 15% 15 of people who try to sign up with us. Because believe it or not, they're in our, according to our analysis, 15% of consumers out there uh, shouldn't be driving their neighbor's car. <laughs> so time's up here with Andre, but I'm sure you, we might have some <laughs> moments to chat with some of you with burning questions. But thank you for talking to us. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you for everyone Thanks, guys. listening. <laughs>